SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. You will need a casting frame, the casting stand and a rubber, green cutting aid, two glass slides, a spacer and a short plate, the green comb, destaining solution, CBB stain, SDS chemicals, isopropanol, a buffer dam, 70% ethanol, filter paper and a pipette aid. In addition, you will need a heating block, an SDS electrophoresis tank with power supply, one times page electrophoresis buffer, your samples, protein ladder, sample buffer, a light box, a centrifuge, a glass or plastic container, and a funnel with filters. Place the rubber on the casting stand. Two glass plates are required for pouring a gel, one spacer and a short plate. The spacer plate is thicker and has two elevations on the sides, the spacers. These spacers provide the thickness of the gel. The short plate is slightly thinner and shorter than the spacer plate. The slides must be cleaned very well before use with 70% ethanol. Put on gloves. The chemicals that we work with here are very toxic, so be careful. Place the clean short plate on the spaces of the clean spacer plate, so there is an opening between the two glass slides. This is where the gel will be poured. Put the slides together in the casting frame. Make sure that the slides on the underside are level on a flat surface before the clamps are closed. Then turn the clamps outwards so that the glass slides are fixed. Check carefully that the underside is flat. Now place the casting frame with the slides in the casting stand. Sometimes you can use a pipette tip between the clamps for extra pressure, but please consult your teacher before doing this. Make sure that the gels do not leak and they're well placed. You can check this with water and if the slides leak, remove them, realign and place them again between the clamps. To make the gels, you will first need to make a 10% APS solution and this must be made fresh. You will also need Tris HCl pH 8.8 .8 and Tris HCl pH 6.8, Milli-Q water, 10% SDS, acrylamide bisacrylamide, your APS, Temed and isopropanol. Prepare the running gel in a fume hood. Calculate the volumes needed for making a gel. Pipette the correct amounts together in a falcon tube. Pipette the Temed and the APS into the solution last, as this ensures that the polymerization of the gel will occur. Mix the solution by inverting two times. Pipette the running gel solution between the glass slides to approximately 10 to 50 millimeters below the top of the shortest glass plate. Carefully fill in the remaining space between the glass plates with isopropanol. This ensures that the top of the running gel is completely straight. Now let the running gel polymerize. The stacking gel is made during the polymerization of the running gel. Calculate the volumes needed for making the gel. Pipette the right amounts together in a falcon tube. Pipette the Temed and APS in last, as this ensures the polymerization of the gel. Mix the solution by inverting two times. After the polymerization of the running gel, the isopropanol is removed with a filter paper. Pipette the stacking gel on top of the running gel. Place the comb in the gel in between the glass plates and immediately remove the excess liquid. Ensure that no bubbles form between the comb and the gel. Let the gel polymerize. When the gel is ready, it is possible to store the gel by putting it in electrophoresis buffer in the cold room. When the gel is fully polymerized, the casting frame can be removed from the casting stand. Then, loosen the clamps and carefully remove the glass with your gel from the casting frame. The gel can now be placed on the electrophoresis frame. To close the frame on the other side, you will need a buffer dam. If you use two gels in the same frame, you do not need this dam. When placing the gel, make sure that the spacer plate is facing outwards and the short plate inwards. By placing the gel in the buffer dam or two gels into the electrophoresis frame, an inner chamber is created that will be filled with buffer. Place the frame with the glass plates into the tank. Pay attention to the orientation of the frame with respect to the tank. You need to be able to connect the poles. Fill the interior chamber with one times page electrophoresis buffer. Ensure that the buffer level rises above the small short plate. 
Also, fill the container to the mark of two gels. The current can now flow through the gel. Carefully remove the comb from the gel. To prepare the samples, boil them for 5 minutes and 95 degrees C in sample buffer. You can use a heating block for this. After heating, spin briefly by means of a short spin at 14,000 RPM in a centrifuge. For each sample, you must load a minimum of 5 microliters and a maximum of 20 microliters per well. Prepare the sample into the well and pay attention that the sample does not overflow into other wells. You can use the pipette to help you get the sample into the wells. Place a protein ladder next to the samples by pipetting 5 microliters into one well. When everything is loaded onto the gel, the lid is put on the tray. Ensure that the correct poles touch each other, black on black and red on red. Connect the power cords to the power supply. Run the gel on 100 volts until the samples are completely in the stacking gel. From then on, the gel can continue to run at 150 to 200 volts. Check the ladder to see if the separation has completed or when the die has reached a centimetre from the bottom of the gel. When it has, you can switch off the power supply. Remove the lid from the tray. Now, remove the frame from the box and open the frame. Take the gel out of the running module. To detach the slides, the easiest way to do this is to place the glass plates with the spacer plate on the table. With the green cutting aid, you can carefully raise and release the short plate. Cut the stacking gel away from the running gel using the green cutting aid. Place the gel into a container and add CBB staining solution until the gel has completely been covered. Stain the gel for at least half an hour. Make sure that the gel does not float to the surface during staining. Pour the excess CBB staining solution back into the bottle through a funnel with a filter. Remove the gel from the CBB staining solution and place the gel in the de-stain solution. De-stain depending on your protocol. After this, the gel can be viewed on a light box.